uh, some um, Um, okay, I don't want to... <laughs> Last night when I was out, uh, I was sitting by myself at a table at the karaoke bar, and uh, at the table, what a over there, there was a lady, she was about 50 years of age, and um, it was a loud bar, and it's hard to hear, but this person started interacting with me, and um, after a brief period of, you know, seeing that she wanted to talk to me, um, um, I directed my attention away to the stage because I didn't want to talk to this woman. And she continually um, she kept talking, and she got really nasty. She was really a nasty woman. She would have been drinking, and you know what a mean drunk is like? Uh, she was a mean drunk. And... Um, I sat there for a little while, ignored her for a while, and she just wouldn't stop. And finally, I looked at her and I said, you know, I didn't come here to talk to you. And I got up and I left the whole building and I went home. So, um, the question comes up, you know, what's going on with people like this? Mean drunks, a very low vibrational person. Uh, mean-spirited person. Uh, um, if you go back to James Redfield's book, uh, The Celestine Prophecy, he talked about this. He talked about ways that humans use to get energy from other people. She's an energy vampire. I mean, does she look like Dracula? No, no. She looks like the town drunk. But she's an energy vampire. How do energy vampires get your energy? Well, if you follow James Redfield, uh, she was using the technique known as the interrogator. Not following social cues. In other words, I was giving her a social cue that I didn't want to interact with her. You know, I was looking at the person singing karaoke on the stage. I was looking down at my phone. But, you know, she was had this aggressive energy. So she had some intimidator and a lot of interrogator energy. What's the point? She wants me to look at her and talk to her because where your attention goes your energy flows that's how they vamp you they get your attention and when your attention is on them they're sucking your energy what kind of energy let's call it chi i don't know it's it's energy human energy and um did she get any of my energy um a little bit a little bit because as soon as I saw that she was um, the town drunk, I mean, I have a lot of swear words that go with this. Um, I stayed for a little bit to see if she would um, stop. Because I didn't want to go home. I wanted to do, there was enough time for me to do two more songs in the karaoke stage. And I, I that's what I go for. Uh, but she wasn't going to let up. And uh, I, so I got up. And I put on my jacket, and my body walked right out the bar door, out onto the street, and then I went home. So she ruined my night. I mean, should you let people ruin your light? Um, yes, you should leave. When you have got an energy vampire around you, the best thing to do is leave. Why? Well, what else are you going to do? This town drunk uh, would have been very happy to get into a brawl. She had the energy of um, that, 
uh, I'm going to brawl. And, you know, you don't want to get involved with these people. You don't want all the hassles of it all. What good does it do? How does it serve me to get into an altercation with one of these people? It doesn't. I get zero benefit out of it. And, um, you know, moving to the other side of the the building to another table, well, it turned out that um, that wasn't the play. I mean, if it's a big place, maybe you could do that. But um, I didn't have, and the body walked right out the door. So go with the body says. It's just that a lot of people are not in tune with their body. And um, a lot of people have been trained, um, don't, you know, don't let somebody like that ruin your night. In the end, uh, what do you want to know? This person is a semi-regular at that particular place. And on the way home, I was having a conversation with myself saying, if that woman is going to be uh, there, uh, I'm not singing karaoke there anymore. In other words, uh, this bar has got somebody, who a semi-regular customer, who is driving away regular customers. Because if I'm... I'm tougher than most people when it comes to energy vampires. I am. I'm, I'm tougher than most people. A lot of women, if they ever experienced an energy vampire like that, uh, they would never enter that place ever again. Never come back. Never, ever come back. And they would tell everybody, don't go there. It's a dangerous place. So all it takes is one town drunk to ruin your bar business. Which is why you should have security. And the person should be barred permanently. And good security people, they know. Because they have good intuition, they just know. This bar doesn't have security, the bartender doubles as security, and um, they're very lax on their security. Uh, and if you think, well, you know, the thing is that there's these energy vampires everywhere. And, you know, that means that you really are limiting yourself as to where you can go. Because if, you know, if you worry about energy vampires at various places, then you'd probably wouldn't even go to Walmart. What I find pretty much with low vibrational people is uh, they can't stand me. Most energy vampires cannot stand me. And there's a hell of a lot of energy vampires of one type or another. Um, you know, they basically get close to me and they can't stand me. You know, they have this game they play where they come in a bar and they sit at your table across from you, usually they're women, and um, um, what are they, they're thinking you're going to buy them a drink. I don't buy them drinks. I know what they're like. They, they, they're they users, total users. But if they sit with me, some of them, like, three minutes they're gone. It's pretty rare for them to stay longer than that, one of these energy vampires. Why is that? It, I make them uncomfortable. You know, and there'll always be new ones that come. It's a regular thing. But mm, most of them, they just get up and they go. But with this one last night... It was me that got up and left. So is she an extra strong energy vampire compared to these other ones? Was it the booze she was drinking with? Was it the people she was sitting with? What really was it? It was just... I didn't like her. She was... Um, relentless. 
and um, did she get under my skin? A little bit, yeah. How much? A little bit. Uh, enough so that I'm still talking about it tomorrow. Like today is tomorrow from yesterday. And um, I mean, what's going to happen with these kind of people? Well, like I said, they're killing your business if you're a business owner of any type. One of these energy vampire people, you get them in anywhere near your store and it's going to drive away. So you drive away traffic, drive away customers. How much, um, how many beers did it, was she worth it like as a customer for the number of beers she drank? You mean the profit on those beers that she drank that you want to keep her in the bar? In this particular bar, that's the way they look at these people. This particular bar is, um, as I said, very lax. And, you know, if the town drunk is there drinking, then it's money coming into the bar. But it becomes known as a place where energy vampire nasty people go. And once you let some of them into your bar, and then more and more and more and more will come. And it will become a center for energy vampires. Which is a shame. Sometimes what happens is... Um, People like this will um, stop coming. I've seen it happen. Oh, horrible, nasty people. Uh, and then never see them again. So I'm kind of hoping that this one will uh, not return. How likely is it? It's pretty likely. I mean, I've seen it many times. Energy vampires um, that just stop coming. Never see them again. So there is something about a person who is of a higher vibration um, that um, pushes energy vampires away. So the best thing you can do is have a lot of high vibrational people around. And in the end, what happens to energy vampires? In the end, what happens to energy vampires is they run out of energy. It's called hitting rock bottom. It's you've already uh, stabbed every friend you ever had in the back so you have no one who will stand up for you no one who will give you money no one will give you a room to stay in overnight you're known and you burned all your bridges so when you hit rock bottom which pretty much is they drank the rent money away well No one's going to help you. So rock bottom is rock bottom. And um, what happens at rock bottom, either you drop dead, or maybe you go into a treatment program for alcoholism. Or maybe you stay at rock bottom for years and years and years. And then some people change and they start climbing their way out of rock bottom. What can you do if someone you know has um, turned into an energy vampire? Hmm. Cut ties with them. Quite often, these energy vampires, when they're um, when they've really lost it, um, that's what they do: is they use their friends. Horrible users, horrible liars, bullshit stories. And someone like me, I can sense a bullshit story from one of these people. 
I can tell when someone's vibration has changed. It's like, usually I get very confused. It's like, I know this person for years, and then, because it happened to me, last, last year it happened to me, somebody I knew, um, their vibration really changed. They, um, and it wasn't just me, it was everyone they knew. They were uh, becoming, they were damaging people's property, they were becoming um, just a horrible liar, horrible bullshit stories, and, um, you know, slathering on the lies. And um, so what happens with this person? Um, I helped them out at one time. And I think that's what they depend upon. It's like, you know, they've got years invested in a friendship with someone. And they blow the friendship. Because after one night with one of these energy vampire people, um, if they come up to you again, it's, fuck you. Fuck you, asshole. Get the fuck away from me. Now get away from me, I'm gonna fucking deck you. Why do I say that? Well, this particular person, you know, he was always, you know, a tough, a tough guy. A tough guy, you know, like, you know, anybody bothers me, you know, they're gonna hear from me. And it was basically, I'm gonna turn the tables on you, tough guy. I'm not gonna be your pushover. I'm not gonna be your bitch. And even though we've got all this time and as friends, um, uh, the, you just ruined the friendship. Are we ever going to be friends again? Fuck no. Fuck no. Because you're a scumbag. You decided to throw our friendship under the bus. So you're a scumbag. Are you ever not going to be a scumbag? I don't know. Plenty of fish in the sea, but you're never going to be my friend again. I've only got so many years on the planet, and I'm not going to waste it picking up scumbags who stabbed me in the back. Um, anyways.